Well, hello. <laughs> you see my clever title, because I don't like to use obscenities, unless you were here a couple hours ago. Right. I'm sure I won the record for most slides of 123, um, so we need to get rolling. So who am I, right? You obviously read my name, so that's all cool, right? But really, most people I work for seem to be this, right, a goon, right? I manage a bunch of security hitmen, right? They say no, a lot, right? It's really what their job is and what I encourage them to do in their job, just say no, right? I'm also an adjunct professor. And the co-founder of this, Shameless Self-Promotion. When people ask what I do, right, I say I fix computers, because I don't want to explain it to people, and they probably don't care and won't understand, because as you know my philosophy from earlier, most people are stupid. But I like to feel like this, right? <laughs> the hacker version of Batman, right? I think I might need to lose a couple pounds, but it'll be all right. right. And I'm not speaking on behalf of any of my employers, right, so when they watch this, I hope they don't get fired, but... Maybe not my professor job, but it is what it is. So what the hell is an adjunct professor, right? Well, actually is what I do, right? Well, adjuncts are typically made of people that work in industry, right? People like you, that in our free time, we have so much, right? We also teach classes, right? We're cheap labor, right? We do the same amount of classes, if not more than full-time instructors. Uh, we make very little money. Um, same standards, right? I teach everything from ethics, the crypto, right? And this is not right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bash some academia for a while. I'm not bashing conferences, right? Like this one or Gurkhan, right? Or classes like often security or sands, right? I love these. This training, right? It's good training for professionals that need their skills updated, right? It's not what we're gonna talk about, right? <laughs> so since hacking has become cool, right? As you can tell by all the hacker accounts are springing up every four months, right? Information security has become a cool cool field. And that's great, right? I love that. Right? And since I both teach and work in the industry, right, I've witnessed a significant increase, right, in the attendance in these courses. Right? One of my students, I asked him why I want to be a security professional. His, right, his answer, hackers are like the jet fighter pilots of IT, which I thought sounded really cool, not really accurate, but I'll take it. Right? I'm not going to say you're wrong. Right? It's advertised commonly as a hot job, right? You hear ads on the radio for every random school that can throw together a couple bucks, right? There's lots of these, right? I blacked out some names so I don't get sued, hopefully, right? Because a lot of these are crappy, right? Because you know, I know everybody here is aware, like, DHS has their certification for schools of academic excellence that says they meet the standards of some random nonsense they don't enforce themselves. Where I teach, we're also one of these, right? Doesn't really mean anything. And they put out these random salary statistics, right? This is how they hook the students, right? You come in, four year career, spend 80 grand, you come out the door making this, right? Where they get these numbers, I have no idea, right? But the pay isn't bad, to be honest with you, right? The pay's pretty good, right? I do this because I enjoy it, right? A lot of us do this because we enjoy it. We just want to make money to be attorneys or accountants. But unfortunately, that entices students to pick this career when they normally wouldn't, right? When it's something they should enjoy doing so you don't quit after two months of law review, right? But it is what it is, right? People want to make money, right? And the coolness of hackers, right, and the promise of money brings in all these students that, right, thought it sounded good or watched too many late night movies on TNT, right? And not that I mind that being a hacker is cool, right? Because writing assembly makes the girls hot, right? Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not, right? But a lot of us have been doing this for a long time, right? <laughs> Back in the days, you got you, you got beat up for this stuff, right? <laughs> it was hard, right? We didn't have the all the cool Windows made hacker programs and Metasploits, <laughs> right? We had 2400 baud modems and Ram DOS 80 and these like not five and a quarter floppies, right? Think bigger, right? Old, right? We had to do it 15 miles a day uphill both ways through the snow, right? We didn't have great courses, right? College courses. You actually learn this stuff from real professionals on a daily basis, right? Which is pretty awesome that my students get this kind of availability, right? So th this stuff look familiar, anybody in the room? Yeah, DigiKey, right? Analog coupler, 
Yeah, well, so will some of the curriculum, right? Some of the curriculum that I'm given to teach is atrocious, right? You can't really read that, right? Computers for kids, right? Old V80, right? It, it's, it's sad. It's just terribly outdated. Right, and teaching new hackers about how to make AOL accounts with credit card generators, right, and about war dialers, I mean, that's cool, kind of, right, if you're old school, remember that stuff, not that I do, right, but it's not really that useful when it, it replaces stuff like actual applicable skills, like coding, right, and basic concepts like the good old CIA triad and least privilege, sometimes we breeze over those in a day, right, one day of class sometimes less than on your instructor, right? Which causes a significant problem for students, right? They take this freshman security class and they move on through the program and they didn't learn the basic skills, so you're trying to tack on new stuff and they don't understand the basics and they get frustrated and sometimes they quit, sometimes they get angry, right? Resources to do actual quality instruction are, is extremely hard to come by, right? It's just hard, it's very limited to the point where some of my students get creative, right? They figure some way out to make the things work. Or they're engaged enough to supply some of their own equipment to do some cool testing, right? I've actually had an instructor, right, argue with me in the middle of my class, trying to take equipment out that I was using to teach that class while the class was going on, right? It's crazy. We have these awesome Cisco carts, right, that wheels so you can roll them around between classrooms, and that's great except they tend to roll away, right? It's convenient, I can just take it because I broke all the shit in my class, so I'll take this. Sad, but it's, it's kind of true, right? A few of my students, three of them actually, have actually went up to eBay and bought their own equipment, their own Cisco gear, so they actually had time to spend learning the, the, the material, right? The limited amount of stuff we have, right, led them to get their own stuff so they actually could learn it, which is great, right? I applaud that, that commitment. It's a lot to ask a 21-year-old kid, right, when they're trying to pay for the humongous, ridiculous, overpriced education and buy booze, right? There are other major costs, right? It's, it's beer and, and, and college, right? So some teachers really don't need the equipment. Why they don't need the equipment is because they just simply teach the test, the test as in certification, right? And why do they do this, right? It's because they're evaluated by the students, right? And that evaluation from the students is, plays a, mar a, a major part to how they're actually evaluating what courses they get to teach and when they move on throughout the university, right? So that fear of unwanted bad surveys leads to some unexpected results, right? And teaching students to pass the CPA exam, right, in the accounting field isn't uncommon, right? It's probably even expected. And in some parts, acceptable, right? But you can't really use that same program structure for fields like information security and IT that change all the time, right? This math, math equation will always be the same, right? Unless you work on Wall Street, right? Then maybe not, maybe be a little creative, but creativity is kind of a requirement for what we do, right? Everybody in here has been working this industry for a while. Yeah, I'm sure you would agree, right? Attacks and hackers, change all the time, what they, what they do. So we have to equip our new professionals to meet those demands. Now all of my students want to be pen testers, right? It's kind of the, the sexy thing to do, right? Working in security school, being a pen tester is like the uber cool thing to do. Well, all of them want to be it, right? All of them. All right, maybe not one of them, right? But he just thinks being a hacker makes him gangster, so. Right, you get that one random guy. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't actually want to be pen testers. They don't want to put in the effort, what it takes to be an actual good pen tester. Right? If you heard my talk earlier today, right, I kind of hammered that most pen tests are worthless garbage. Right? They're kind of marketed the same way AV is now, just something you have to do. Right? Some pen tests are very successful, very skilled people right, at great value. Most of my students do not aspire to be those people. They just want the, the paycheck from working at Ernst & Young. Right? They don't really want to be successful. Some of them actually just want to learn how to hack into shit because they think it's cool, right? I can't blame them because it's kind of cool, but you don't get paid very well for doing that for very long, right? A lot of them like busy work, right? It's much easier than thinking, 
So it's kind of the norm, because again, teachers don't want to get bad reviews. Students complain about having to do real work, so they give them some bullshit busy work. And that's all they expect to be graded on. Right? Grades are king, right? I have students complaining all the time about grades. Grades have no value anywhere. Right? Nobody's going to ask your GPA when you apply for a job. They do, you probably should go apply somewhere else. Right? But it doesn't matter. The only place I've seen it matter is if you're at one school, you get your undergraduate, and you want to stay at the same school, you get your master's degree. But then it still really doesn't matter, as long as you have money, they don't really care. Right? So how do we fix the student's perception of how this all works and get the right people into this? Right? If you haven't followed my train of thought so far, right, it's about making them actually think. My favorite line to tell my students is, why don't you fucking look it up? Right? They just want the answer, and that's not really the way I teach. Right? Figure it out, it's pretty effective. Right? I do this because I may end up, and may end up hiring some of these people. Right? So if I have that issue, I want to make sure they're aware of what I'm going to expect and what some of you may expect when you hire these, these kids. Right? So trying to fix that, right, it pisses them off. Right? This is an actual email I got. I blanked out his name because FERPA, right, the whole regulation on education, blah, blah, blah. Right? This is what he actually sent me. Right? It's ridiculous. It doesn't even make sense. Right? So he's trying to grade you up at this point. And this is true. He turned in one thing all semester, one assignment, right, all semester. Got a, he got a, a, a 44 on his final exam, right, and didn't understand why he was failing. He had the audacity to email his counselor to try to get me to change his grade, right? Not going to happen. I didn't really write that, right, because I would no longer teach there. So I'll say that kind of stuff because it's not on record, but I learned a long time ago what you put on record, like, say, a talk at Nauticon, you got to be a little more careful, but oops. So this is what I really wrote, right? You don't need to read this big fucking eye chart, right? But you'll see the key points, right? He had, like, nothing turned in, a crappy grade. The final exam was open note, right? And I tell them it's open note. And the week before the final exam, we spend the entire class going over what's on the exam. So take fucking notes that one day and you're good. And I also gave him extra credit, <laughs> right? I gave this kid extra credit for a group project that he didn't work on, didn't turn in, but his group did extra work, so I gave him the points anyways to be the nice guy. Well, didn't really work out for me, so fuck him. <laughs> right? I mean, or him or her. We don't know who it is. Right? So it's never a good idea to close the email that demands justice, right? Because you might actually get justice. You may find out your, your C- minus was really a D plus, and you complained, and I'll go back and recalculate, and now you're fucked. <laughs> so make sure you at, to get, to get what you're asking for, right? And this weeds out idiots, which I actually like. I, person <laughs> I personally enjoy watching my students, right, get the fuck out. I have a very high drop rate in my classes. We're talking like 60, 70%, which I catch shit for all the time from my, uh, my boss at, at school. Which at first I cared, but then I was like, you know what, you don't really pay me enough for me to care, so... I either have a couple of really good students that are great that I can bring into the industry and kind of help mentor, then a bunch of ass clowns are just going to ruin what we do, right? Getting rid of them the first three months of a class, right, is far more advantageous than dealing with them in the workplace, right? Easier for me to force them out of class than to fire them when somebody hired them, right? I know this firsthand. I had an open engineer one position, right? Fresh, I'm looking for a fresh out of college, security guy, you know, or girl, you know, it's, it's interesting. So that's my only prereqs, right? Be interested in what we're doing, because it's, it's going to suck, right? If you don't like it, you're going to quit after three months, like my, my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> True story, right? And I was unable to locate more than two applicants out of over 130 that applied. They weren't total fucking idiots, right? They couldn't answer the incredibly complicated question of what's a botnet, right? Really? Or how do you keep up on security news, right? Those are real technical questions, apparently. I get dumb stares in 20 minutes talking around the answer because I don't know the answer and hope you'll just forget what you asked me, right? And it's fucking ridiculous. So that's really sad, right? Because 
Any students in here, right? That shit's expensive, right? It absolutely is. Right? And they spend tens of thousands of dollars on this piece of paper that taught them fucking nothing, right? So I mentioned earlier about the curriculum being old and outdated because it, it terribly is, right? So the way to do that, right, is what I like to do is if I get students that come from other classes but they didn't necessarily get the, the basics, I'll spend time on those basics, right? I'll quickly learn who actually in, is interested and cares, right, and who's just there to learn how to break into Facebook, right? But teaching network security to students who don't know networking is fucking pointless, right? There's prereqs for a reason, and when they go through those prereqs and they don't understand the material, it makes them miserable, which makes me miserable, which makes me get them the fuck out of my class, right? Teaching coding to somebody, I'm oh, sorry, application security to somebody who doesn't know coding is also pointless, right? You can't look for buffer overflows if you don't understand how a program fucking works. What's a method? Right? So proper design um, curriculum, right, is based on the fundamentals until you actually get into very specific courses, right? Gives them real skills that they can then build on, right? We teach those concepts, they're more easily to pick up the, the additional skills, right? Once you have the basic building blocks, it's easy to tack on and bolt on more skills. But if you don't have the base, you're kind of out of luck. Right, another thing I like to do is explain why we do what we do, not just, right, how we do it. Running tools and breaking into Windows 2000 servers is fun, I guess, but it doesn't really give them a lot of skill that has any actual ap applicable value, right? I love building hands-on labs, right? I absolutely love it. It's, it's great for the students that actually care. I, I give them, you know, something to actually do, a nice walkthrough on how to do it, and we'll see who actually comes up with something usable and worth something, right? I much prefer that over mindless case studies, right, which is kind of a popular norm in education. They give you this paper somebody else wrote and tell you to read what they wrote and review it. I don't see the value in that, right? I can read on my own time. I don't need you to fit back what he said in paragraph four as some indication that you know shit, right? And don't skip right to Metasploit. As much as we all love Metasploit, and my students all know what Metasploit is, well, some of them don't actually, which is sad, right? But don't skip to it. I mean, it's fun, it's the cool stuff, but it really doesn't have any value if they don't know what they're doing. They know, you know, use exploit whatever, right? Then that's fine, but it doesn't have any value, right? My attempts to do this pissed a lot of people off, right? My students were pissed because they didn't get the normal do three case studies and I passed your class. My boss there got pissed, the university did, because I had a lot of students dropping, which means they lost money, right? Pissed me off because I had to deal with the pissed off people, right? Because the university really wants to ensure the students are happy, right? And they really reward teachers based on student surveys. Not really on any actual measurable value of the course, right? And pissed off students give poor satisfaction reports to the, the university. They absolutely do. I've seen this in real life. It's give me a fucking train wreck, right? If they get those, the university gives the teacher a poor review, right? And that makes the teacher give up and go back to teaching the test, and we have the whole cycle all over again, right? Nobody likes to get yelled at, including me, right? Which makes college kind of sound like a huge waste of time, right? You're spending 50K, why bother, right? Get certifications, right? We all love certifications, right? You know, CISSP, right? And they have the same allure as the hacker classes, right? They're told about, even from universities like the one I work at, that you get certifications, you get more money, right? I did have the unfortunate experience that my, a former employer, not where I work now, actually gave me a 20% raise for my CISSP. I'm not gonna say no to money, right? That right there told me he was an ass clown. I'll take it, I mean, I'll absolutely take it, right? And some programs actually give students class credit for certifications, right? And master's gr graduate program, like admission criteria, right? So if you have a security plus, apparently you're qualified to go in the master's information insurance program, right? Awesome. That's fucking skills, right? In many courses I teach, right, this is the actual learning outcome from the syllabus I'm given by the university, right? The outcome is to pass security plus. Right? I, I didn't realize that Universities turned into brain dump classes, but some of them have, right? And it bothers me, right? And students ask me about certifications, right? They, they want to know what certification they need to get to get to whatever they want to get, right? Be a pen tester, 
go make whatever amount of money, right? They ask all the time. And it's tough, right? Because some employers actually care about certification, right? Dice.com, right? Bang, bang, bang. I'll require certification. Right? Some employers actually really like certification. Some don't care, and some actually will count it against you. I mean, you see CEH on your resume, right? In my mind, you go down a notch. But yes, you can take an exam to how to run Metasploit. Good for you. Right? In reality, they do have some value. Certifications have value, right? The value is they get you past the HR screener, right? Because the HR person has a checklist of the skills and certifications they're looking for, right? And they check the box that you have this, and it's a differentiator. Here's someone who doesn't have them, right? And as long as you use certifications as that, right, they really do have value. Come on. Okay. So why do adjunct professors actually do this work, right? Because the pay fucking sucks, right? The hours are long, time away from my family, time away from Curacon, right? And most of my students hate my guts, right? They really do. I have probably two or three students every semester that are like the, the gems, right? They actually care, they actually want to learn, they actually I forge good relationships with, right? But really, we all do have a vested interest, right, in the future of our, our colleagues, right, or people that will eventually work in our industry, right? If we don't teach them the right way and what really matters, somebody else is going to. That's, you know, asking for a check, right? And it, it, I love the fact, as I said earlier, right, it's a chance to weed out the non-proficient professionals, right, before they work for you or with you. It's a good opportunity. I can, I can meet them, I can see what they actually care about, what they know, right? It's also a chance to weed, out, weed them out before they work for you if they're going to be unhappy. I don't like working with pissed off people, right? I work with a, a lot of people that like to say no and be jerks, which is great. That fits our, where I work, our motif, but angry people, right, aren't the best to hang out with, except for me, right? So I try to keep my students engaged, right? This is where I come with a lot of hands-on stuff, right? I try, to, I try to offer internships when I can to my students, right? We, I always bring in a big crop to Gurkhan to volunteer, right? So we really have to reset their expectations, right? What they're actually going to get from college. Not the, I'm going to get my CEH and make six figures, because it's just not real, right? We have to really have to give them their money's worth. Otherwise, that degree really is worthless, right? Becomes a University of Sneenix degree, right? Paying $10,000 for a piece of paper is a bit. Right, some of them actually deserve no, more. Not all of them. Some actually deserve getting nothing for their money. But and teaching the certification test is bullshit. Just stop doing it. Right? Teaching people to pass Security Plus as an actual outcome of a, uh, a accredited college program is absolute garbage. Right? It just pisses off your future employer. Right? Because they hire you because you have these certifications that think you know stuff and you don't know shit. So they end up firing you. Right? I mean, if you're a student, right, you really have to demand more than that. Otherwise, don't be surprised when you get hired and then later fired because you didn't know shit, right? But you had a CEH, so you're all good. And a lot of, a lot of the material we talked about earlier, right, was old, day, outdated, garbage material, right? The answer really is, right, to supplement. Right? If they give me some old crappy book, I, don't, I just don't use it. Students are typically pretty good with that, right? I tell them, hey, take your book back, get your money back, you're not going to need it, save your $100. Most of them like that, right? And now to supplement with other, other, other items, right? Google works for everybody, including me. Right? And if you are a student and you get garbage material, right, complain. You're the customer. The fact that I don't want you to give me a bad review also applies to I don't want you to get pissed and give me a bad review because I gave you garbage material, right? Just complain. It works. And please, be genuinely interested and learn some basic shit before you show up. Right. If you don't know how a keyboard works, then please don't come. Right. <laughs> and don't expect don't expect to be done learning ever. Right. We all know this field changes every day. Right. And that's why we come to places like Nanicon. Right. That's why we go to training at Derbygon. Right. It's to learn new stuff and stay up on this. So you can't just show up, get your degree, come to come to work and be done. It's just not going to work out for you. Right. So if you don't have a passion, right? Students don't have a passion. They need to piss off. Right. So there can be real value in these courses, right, and stuff we teach, right? But it's really up to all of us, right, to set standards, right? Teachers, students, employers, right? When you're hiring somebody that has a degree, right, find out more about that degree program. Right, and we can really use it as a good way to network, right, between students and professors and employers, all coming together and figuring out what actually works in academia, right, and setting the standards and requirements that actually make it work for everybody.
right? And the students really got to get on top of this, right? Students keep paying their hard-earned money for trash. They're going to keep getting trash. They're not complaining. The university is giving them what they want, right? You can go to ITT Tech and pay 50 grand and learn how to fix TVs, but it's not really going to do anything for you. All right, because one thing to share, right, this stuff always changes. Always changes. Right, and we really have to equip our students and our colleagues, right, to be successful. All right, so thanks. We are in Cleveland, so don't stab me. I'll be around if anyone wants to chit chat.